And welcome back to The Morning Blend with our continuing series, Money Sense, with Ellen Becker Investment Group. Well, there are a lot of savings and cliches about money, or sayings, sorry, and cliches about money that are meant to give us a clear perspective. But our next guest says these common sayings could actually be holding us back. So Karen Ellen Becker is the founder and senior wealth advisor, and she's got a new perspective that could put you in a better <laughs> position financially. Good to see you again. Good morning. How are I you? I <laughs> love this topic because I am a firm believer what you say, what you speak, what you put out in the universe comes back and becomes your reality. Yes. And that's really what this is about. Well, and the more you think about it, you're right, the more, mm -hmm. the more you start acting it out. And so some of these phrases I came across, I'm thinking, wow, you know, they're kind of cute, but then again, they're not so cute. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not so cute if you start to believe them. They become your reality. So yeah. let's break down some of these common phrases that people have said. You've heard them before. Do you have them in your vocabulary and why should you take them out with the first one? It takes money to make money. That one seems positive. Yeah, but think about this. If you don't have any money, and if you think you have to have money to get something, it limits your thinking. And really what you need is you don't need money. You need ideas. Yeah. And if you've got, if you're thinking about the ideas and you go out and sell the idea, that's what big investors are looking for, the new hot thing. And so if you say, well, I don't have any money, so therefore I'll never be successful, you've limited yourself. Yeah, right then and there. You know, and yes. you think about people who want to start a business and it's the, you have to spend money to make money. It's the same theory. Yes. It, it can, you're right, it can stop that idea from progressing. I love that one. The next one, money doesn't grow on trees. Have you heard that one from your parents? <laughs> How many times, right? Well, I'll tell you, I certainly heard it. <laughs> Every, Every time, time I wanted a new Barbie. <laughs> or you left the lights on or, yes. or you did something. But you know, money does grow on trees. And again, it gets back to the whole idea of ideas. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you only think about money growing on trees, it makes it feel like it's really scarce mm -hmm. and like you're not going to have it. And again, it gets back to you thinking about what you want and, and going after it. And money does grow on trees, but they're ideas. And yeah. that's the hot thing that's out there. It's like someone writing a book or all the different things that people can do. It limits you. I love this because I'll never forget this this girl that I worked with once. Um, I, we grew up relatively poor, and one of the girls that I work with was very affluent as she grew up, and we worked in a sales position together. And when she would sell things that I thought were extremely expensive, she thought they were cheap. Yeah. She sold so much because she simply would, she didn't think it was a big deal. Right. So therefore her clients didn't think it was a big deal. Yes. Where I imposed that feeling of, I know this is expensive. Someone on might not want to buy exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so it, I just think this is phenomenal. Another day, another dollar. That's the one we said earlier. What do you oh, think of that? Oh, work harder, work harder. The harder you work, the more you'll have. Actually, the smarter you work. Mm -hmm. the better. And so people have this idea that um, another day I got to work harder. And, and it's really working efficient, working smarter and thinking about what you're doing. So many people just kind of, I remember my father saying to me when I was a kid, wait till you go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yep. wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> What is work? Yes. <laughs> you know, I love my job. I am so happy. It's a it's a passion and, and and that's what's important. So some of these things can really play, you know, games on your brain. And millennials have that feeling too. They don't work for a job, they work for themselves for their passions. Yes. So money is the root of all evil. How about that one? Oh my goodness, it's the love of money. That's the <laughs> root of all evil. It's that greed of money. Yeah, and, and when you think about what money can do for you, it gives you opportunities, it gives you choices. That's what money can do. And you know, if you're not happy without money, you're not going to be happy with money. It's so true. <laughs> I, I read um, the series Think and Grow Rich. Yes. And they talked about that exact principle that money is not the root of all evil. It's, it's other things. It's other things. Yeah, money, you can do so many good things yes. with it. Um, a penny saved is a penny earned. We hear that in advertising. <laughs> well, you know, in, in many cases, um, that's just kind of a cute little cliche. Mm -hmm. But what it really means is, can I please pick your brain? Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got really good ideas and you give all your ideas away and somebody uses their ideas to their benefit, you could be giving away something that has great value to you. So you've got to just be a little bit careful about how much you're willing to give away for free. Is this one true or not? Money can't buy you happiness. 
Oh, it is true. Money can't buy you happiness. Um, but what money can do if you invest it properly is it can help you to keep up with taxes, inflation. Yeah. It can really help you. Money money can't. But the truth of it is, and, and, it, and people say it all the time, money can't buy you happiness, but it buys you freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, I have so many clients that are worried about their money. And you know, it doesn't matter if people have a small amount of money or if they have a large amount of money. Sometimes people are afraid of their money and, and they're just not happy because they don't have a relationship with their money. They don't have a relationship with their life. Yeah, it, it can relieve so much stress. I mean, we know yes. even in marriages, it's the number one stressor and cause for arguments and divorce. Mm -hmm. So just relieving that stress can uh, and alleviate some of that and create some happiness. Uh, a penny for your thoughts. You kind of went through that yep. one. Selfishness is a virtue. Well, I still remember when I was a very young woman in business and I immediately got involved in all kinds of outside activities such as um, different boards I was on and, and volunteering my time. And I remember a an, an senior gentleman coming up to me and he said, Karen, that's all really noble that you're doing that, but you gotta focus on your business. Yeah. You know, you give back to the community when you've made your mark, when you've actually built your business and you have strength in your business. And I see so many people doing that, spending so much time, um, and that's a worthy cause, but you really have to have balance in it and you have to spend time on your business to build your business. Mm -hmm. We always say, say no when you feel like it would deplete you. Say yes when you feel like it would fill you up. Yes. If you need some help managing your finances, if you want someone who can listen to you or just change the way you think about money in general, contact Ellen Becker Investment Group. 888-642-7526. EllenBecker.com is the website, and they have their new office in the village of Whitefish Bay, so visit her there as well. Thanks so much. I love Thank this you. one. <laughs> love it. Thanks, Karen. It's fun. All right.